that cities are made of architecture, and that's why it's really important for them to be inspiring and creative, but at the same time, um, connect with people's needs. That's a really big question. <laughs> One that I think about all the time and I'm not sure I've come to an answer for. A background in fine art, um, coming into this for creative reasons. Working in urban planning uh, is my first big job. And then sandwiched between that was architecture. Uh, at that time, there was nothing here. And Horton Plaza was the centerpiece of that. We tried as hard as we could to design something that would be connected to the city. The industry and the, and the state of downtown San Diego at the time didn't really, wasn't really friendly to that idea. The rents were 19 cents on the outside and it was seen as an unsafe place. And uh, that was one of the reasons that we struggled so hard to make it external to the city because that's what it needed to be to become part of the redevelopment project. And there was an anti-architectural uh, attitude towards it. It was a famous place when it was first built, and internationally famous. This exciting, world-famous experience was bottled up inside. There was a craziness to Horton Plaza, you know, that was, um, it was fueled by the Olympics because we were the architects for the 84 Olympics and it was all about color and whimsy. So much of the perception of Horton today in particular is a negative, like, you know, why is it empty? Why did it fail? The process that creates things like Horton Plaza from a development standpoint, from cities and the development industry and the architectural side, is a process. And it evolves and changes. And I've been involved on and off for a long time, joke often about the fact that I'll never ever get away from being involved in this project. <laughs> I'm Frank Walden and I invite you to join me on a tour of Horton Plaza to explore the the history and origins of the ideas that created a famous place that changed San Diego.